are call and behaviorism, instincts and purpose of behavior, history of psychology, Professor Michael Dotwin, Department of Psychology, California State University, Fresno. Clark Hull was one of the most influential psychologists of the 1930s through the 1950s. He brings a biological addition to the notion of behaviorism and was very influenced by Pavlov, Darwin, and Newton. His theory is one of drive reduction and the reduction of a drive for Hull is reinforcement. In other words, if you're hungry and you eat and you're no longer hungry, that drive has been satisfied. He operationalized this theory in a complex mathematical model. Uh, we're going to skip the math on this one, but I wanted you to know what was there. So let's learn a little bit about Clark Hull. Clark Hill was one of the most influential psychologists of the 1930s and 40s. He left a legacy of work that was large and he had students and other followers who carried on and developed his ideas after his death. Hall was extremely influenced by Sir Isaac Newton and Ivan Pavlov. He believed in the shaping of respondent behavior and furthermore that behavior was mechanistic and humans could be explained as machines. He served as president of the APA and he developed early notions of learning machines and artificial intelligence. Hall viewed humans as machines that learn and think. And he developed an idea primarily based around the concept of drive. Hall thought there were two primary drives. One being a primary drive, how about that? And that's associated with innate biological needs that are required for survival. You should be well acquainted with these types of needs at this point in class. There are your basic motivational things, uh, food, hunger, thirst, sex. Uh, Paul adds pain in there. Anything that is a right basic biological need. Secondary drives were those behaviors and characteristics that weren't primary ones but yielded similar responses to primary drives. So, for example, if you see a picture of food, you react to that picture of food, just like you might react to seeing the food itself. That would be a Hall secondary drive. His primary law was that of primary reinforcement. And this occurs when a stimulus response relationship is followed by a reduction in need. The probability increases that the same stimulus will evoke the same response. And that will increase in terms of the rate of responses. This is his restatement of Thorndike's Law of Effect. Hall believed in the hypothetical deductive approach to conducting research. He reviewed all the current research on learning and developed a series of postulates about learning. Little typo on the slide there, sorry. Furthermore, he then, from those postulates, derived a th series of theorems and these theorems he used to generate testable hypotheses about the world. Clark Hall believed there were physiological links between behavior and the innate drives and needs of an organism. He, as other folks have called them, 
called these intervening variables. Now, Hall believed there could be multiple internal events that interact to cause overt behavior. In other words, multiple internal drive states may affect any given behavior. And if you look at the basic biological drives, you can see how they might interact with each other in terms of hunger and thirst kind of going along with each other. Uh, there would also possibly be things like the amount of pleasure or pain that would go with eating something. So multiple things can cause behavior according to Hall from these internal states. Now, Hall believed that these intervening variables were evolutionary adaptations, and the reinforcement of these intervening variables uh, were conducive to the organism's survival. Now, Hall's theory is usually typically stereotyped as a theory of drive reduction, and it's based on his views of reinforcement. So for Hall, biological needs drive the behavior of the organism. It's the fundamental unit of analysis in his model. Reinforcement is basically the reduction of the drive state. So if you're hungry and you eat something and you're satiated, you've reduced your hunger drive, and that to Hull is a satisfying state of affairs. According to Hull, habit strength can be operationally defined as the number of reinforced pairings between the environmental situation and the response for an intervening variable. So the more pairings, the more reinforcement, and the greater, in turn, the habit strength. For Hall, an increase in habit strength is equal to learning. And Hall believed that the reaction potential was the probability of a learned response. So if I give you a series of choices or if you have an aroused drive state, what is the probability you will do any given thing? And that's the reaction behave potential. And according to Hall, the stronger the association between things, the greater reinforcement, the greater probability of the learned response. Reaction potential, according to Hall, is the function of the level of the drive present in the number of times the response has been reinforced in a situation kind of wordy, but basically this is the potentiality to do any behavior at any given time. And for Hall, a key factor in that was the situational variables and how many times the response had been reinforced, resulting in learning in the past. Hall influenced a generation of experimental psychologists and mentored many, many successful students. His ideas were applied to personality psychology, psychopathology, conflict studies, conflict studies, I want to get into a conflict about that one, and the study of aggression. Although his specific math in terms of drive theory has kind of gone by the wayside. So that's a bit about Clark Hall. He has an interesting theory, and it's kind of hard to encapsulate it in just a few minutes. He wrote many books, published hundreds of articles, and his followers published an even greater number of them. His influence on psychology at the time was great, 
and it was transmitted through his students and still has an effect on many areas of contemporary thinking. That's all for now. We'll see you next time. History of Psychology. This has been a We Have Couches video production. Copyright 2020, Professor Michael Botwin. All rights reserved. Bye now.